Hello, hello, hello. Hope everybody's having an awesome weekend wherever you may be. This is 50 Pips Rocking and Rolling. It's a 0308 2014. Not making any trade calls or recommendations because you and only your response for the trades you may decide to take. The fact you're listening to this means you're going to do understand you accept all the disclosures and disclaimers on the blog. Understanding that we're just here performing some technical analysis for educational purposes only, right? So what's going on? So uh, everybody's as we're going towards uh, slowly moving towards more and more of a summertime feel, uh, we're going to have a relatively interesting um, week here in terms of on the data front. You know, we got the PMIs out of China, and then you know on Monday we start with some uh, you know some of the PMIs and the the Australian data. But really, it's going to be a pretty interesting week for. Australian dollar with a uh, trade balance and the cash rate and the the RBA statement, right? So that's going to be interesting. We have all the PMIs coming out of Europe and of UK and US. So clearly there's there's room for movement Monday, Tuesday. Then we go on to Wednesday, also more trade balance across the board. And then we go on Thursday, which is going to see, you know, the official bank rate out of the BOE and an ECB press conference with unemployment claims out of the US. And then we got the RBA on the wires again on Friday with unemployment out of Canada, you know, so and, and a BOJ press conference. So clearly there's, there's room for volatility to kick in this week. Also, because we have had movements in the market, right, especially on the equity side, and maybe, you know, the fact that we're going into the summer chop could also, you know, uh, amplify some of the moves. So I think the most interesting things going into this week to look at, as always, I'm going to try and keep these as short as we can. Every now and again, we'll do a full one hour session where we, you know, live session on a Sunday where we review all the pairs, but people like to have these short things they can just look at. So we'll focus here, starting on with the uh, Yes, what's going on in the ES? Well, in terms of the ES, you know, we talked about the fact that um, it was rotating higher, kept on holding a very a good bid tone. It kept we kept on seeing dip spot, and we expected this to slowly rotate and make a move towards the 2000 level and ultimately take that out this year. But we also mentioned that we would definitely not be buyers at highs, we would be looking for tactical opportunities to get short. Right, even though understanding that we may not get a lot of opportunities, but we're going to be very selective because we, the higher we grinded without any kind of pull, pullback, you know, the the healthier pullback would be. You know, we'd expect that to come. It doesn't mean it have to come, has to come because the market can remain rational longer than you can stay solvent. But sooner or later, it will come. Right, and uh, what we were waiting for was some kind of like a negative close on daily at highs, and we actually got that, and we talked about that too. Right, and we said, you know, first targets for this move if we start to roll is a move back into the 1949s 1950 as we have these two pivotal levels on on the chart and he said you know as long as it's in here it's going to be a pretty shallow pullback so watch to see if the bids come in and support this aggressively we'd expect an aggressive press back to take out those those highs very very quickly but if that let goes then we're looking at a couple of levels to the downside and the levels we had was this uh, 11, uh, 1917 with a 100 coming back and then that was going to be the big pivotal level for possible much bigger retracement you know down towards 1886s or depending on when this 200 will start to come in right I know a lot of people will be talking about much bigger retracements but as far as we're concerned we're just focusing on you know the trend what's moving and what would be healthy in terms of here so going into the week you know we've had some good move now after this this kind of action and again everything happened but it you'd probably expect to see some kinds of choppy action to some more at least at least the market to attempt to take more downside action I think a lot of market participants a lot of the pros will be going into this week thinking mm, sideways chop to probably continue to be heavy uh, sell rallies look for this to continue to correct down um, you know as far as we're concerned what we'll focus on is action around the 1917s now we know there is a risk especially since we're going towards the summer chop if we accelerate lower we could try and make a run for the 200 DMA this week so the levels we're looking at as always we're just focused on levels right and the levels we're looking at is this um, 1886 to the downside and any kind of area, you know, depending on how this comes in, then we're looking at as we trade right here, 1917's pivotal, and then 
those 1949s to the upside. As long as we can't get a daily close back above those 1949s, this will probably continue to hold a heavy tone and that 200 DMA is going to be attracting. You know, if we start to get daily closes above the 1950s, then probably most of the bets are off for the, for the bigger correction to happen right here, right now. Again, as I said also on Twitter, you know, we discussed that, you know, don't be too greedy if you're off those lows. You know, the percentage play was to try and take, you know, t take a good chunk of profits off into those 1917s. That's pretty much the core move we're looking for. Now we go into a new week, new reality. Let's see what happens. But clearly the market's being very, very interesting. Then, you know, how that's going to translate is, you know, what's going to happen on the dollar, right? And there are a lot of interesting things. So we talked about CAD. And we said that don't be fooled by velocity of move inside range and that any kind of move inside this area was going to be very, very choppy, right? And then unless we had daily closes outside, or at least the daily closes outside will be the indication for the next move, right? So right here, we pressed back up and we said, you know, once we're moving back above these basically 0800, as long as it's holding there, you know, pressure is going to be to try and take out the upside to go towards that 100 DMA that whole area and you see that top side is being protected here so going into the week this is going to be very interesting incidentally you know this is also 50 back of the move from highs to lows you see the 50 backs coming in so the market is pretty much front running those shorts so the shorts really need to keep pressure on shorts really need to see this trade back below that 100 or at least you know even back below the 108 50s early early in the week and if they can do that then it'll be pressure on so um, as long as we can get back below these moving averages, you know, we'll expect see the market to try and take a move back down and to see, you know, more strength coming in on the CAD. But if we take out those highs, especially early in the week, then this could easily be, um, you know, especially due to the summer chop and aggressive acceleration to try and move all the way back into those highs. So again, that hasn't really changed. It's chop inside this range. We'll wait to see daily close out size, but it's clearly a very, very interesting point, right? And this translates across the board. Like if you look at something like Kiwi 2, what we said is once we broke down, once we broke down that 100 DMA, we said there's very little chance trying to be aggressive, trying to catch this. Let this come to you. Wait, you know, what we'll be attracting is this confluence zone of this support zone and the 200, right? And that's exactly what we got. And this is where it's starting to bounce. So the big question for the week now is, you know, it's just a healthy little bounce. The big question is, is this a bottom, right? And we're going to go right back up and we're going to continue the rotation higher. This was just a healthy retracement and we're going to rip back higher. Or is this the start of a bigger move, which could either, you know, start the week going straight down or is it going to, you know, or are we going to see some kind of little profit taking here on the shorts, a little reaction coming back up and then it sells back down okay so what that implies is that the key levels to watch is well to the downside we already have this highlight right if we take these lows and we get daily closes below the 8400 this is going to trade very very heavy right for the shorts as long even if this bounces as long as the shorts can hold it below this 8640 this 100 dma this is going to, to continue to probably trade heavy and we have a chance of this kind of pattern playing out but if Early-ish in the week, we start to rally back up and we start to get daily closes back above the 8640s, then expect this to try and take a step back into those highs. So again, this is the, the key area, the key area to watch, right? And as we said on on um, on the, the CAD, you know what, you know, it's about close outside these levels. There'll be a lot of choppy action. You know, you could see velocity of move inside the range. And especially in these summer markets, a lot of the new newer traders can get a bit confused with the velocity of move inside range. You know, that could also be due to price hitting air pockets and illiquid markets. Focus more on the levels and hold outsides, not necessarily touches of specific levels, especially in this kind of market, right? And um, what's going on on Euro? Well, on Euro, right, we discussed this weekly. So, you know, we're in the business of trying to look at what can happen right in the future, not just reacting to 
to what happened and what we've been focused on a lot is the fact that we've moved down and this was very very we're going into very very key supports on euro right this is basically uh, 200 DMA and the 100 DMA of course the 100 is below the 200 so it's still relatively heavy you know pressure is on we said keep an eye on this area because if this going if this is going to bounce anywhere this is probably the most you know this is the most likely area for it to try and find a bid and we see it came back inside the zone right the weekly didn't close quite positive it's still closed negative but clearly it caught a bid here so now keep in mind that as long as price can hold below the 3500, this will likely continue to trade with a very, very heavy tone. And what the shorts will be looking for, the shorts will be looking to try and get a weekly close back below this 100, back below, you know, the 3300, so inside the 3290s, back below this area to put increased pressure on the pair and what will most likely be, you know, it's the start of a more aggressive move all the way back down into the the, the low 30s, right? So that's really got, going to be the key for the shorts, trying to get price to move back below, take out this level and close below that level on the daily. What the longs need really for this to start to change a bit, they need to see this close back above the 3700. Once we close back on a daily 3700s, then we could try and make another run for those uh, 140s and try and get some aggressive move and keep in mind that as long as we stay inside here what's happening is effectively we're back inside the chop range so don't get confused by velocity of move inside range this could be very choppy and not necessarily mean a lot now again would it be surprising for us if we get a bounce and we move back inside the zone to see this trade in a very choppy sideways range for the summer not necessarily wouldn't be too surprising right so i think even though we could see aggressive moves uh we're probably still looking at some kind of very broad and aggressive range um in terms of velocity but still rangy right we really need to start you know i think that will be very the the, the situation now will be very different from the weekly if we get uh, a close below that 3300 or you know if we get some aggressive moves to the upside but that's what i'd be focused on but again keep in mind we do have a lot of data it could be a very interesting week okay so I hope everybody found that interesting. So I wish you a great rest of the weekend, wherever you may be, whatever you may be doing. I'll see you guys on Twitter. We'll be around all week. And let's hope it's going to be a good one for everybody. Have an awesome one. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye-bye.